everyone and welcome back to the candy shop if you're watching on youtube be sure to like subscribe and share this with a friend if you're listening on our podcast sugar pills a practical guide to self-care be sure to also subscribe leave a review and share this with a friend as well so I am super excited for today's episode. We are going to be talking to David Vaswani, if I'm pronouncing his name, <laughs> beautiful name correctly. Appreciate you. Absolutely. He is one of the contestants on HBO Max's upcoming, I believe it's now premiered, Live, uh, yeah. reality show called F-Boy, <laughs> which I think we all can relate to at one point or another in our lives. So without further ado, welcome, Davij. How are you? Welcome. <laughs> I'm doing good. I'm doing good. It's an exciting time. We got the next uh, four episodes dropping tonight. So very stoked. Ooh, so this is perfect, perfect timing for you guys. Perfect timing. So why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? I know that you're a digital media executive. You're a podcaster, YouTuber. So you definitely understand this digital world that we're in. And you're also an entrepreneur and you're working with some of the biggest influencers and names in the game. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, for sure. And of course, you know, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Uh, so, you know, I, my life's been kind of weird. It's been all over the place. Um, grew up in, in Orange County, moved to LA, went to USC, uh, been starting businesses for the last like decade. A lot of them failed. Most of them failed, quite frankly, and it went from losing, you know, just like losing thousands of thousands of dollars to, you know, just messes of, of businesses. But finally, uh, about two years ago, found a, founded a company called Division Media. And basically, we're connecting some of the biggest brands in the world with some of the biggest influencers and celebrities in the world. And now we've grown to a team of 20. Uh, and I think, you know, we'll probably get acquired in the next year or two. And, and business has been great. And, you know, I, I stumbled upon this opportunity to, to do FY Island. And I was like, fuck it, let's do it. So here I am. Yeah, definitely. Um, and with that, I just wanted to talk about, I love that you're being transparent and honest that you've failed and you've lost thousands of dollars and you've had to restart. So do you want to talk a little bit about resiliency? Because I think that's really what has gotten you to the point that you're are that you're at now. Like I think a lot of us think it's an overnight success thing or that this game is really easy or that, you know, we only see the curated Instagram feeds. We don't see the grit that goes behind it. So do you want to talk a little bit about your mindset and resiliency that kind of put you in the position to then to be able to receive this massive opportunity with F-Boy and HBO Max, because if you had given up or if you, um, you know, just didn't think that you were good enough, you wouldn't have been in the position to receive this uh, opportunity. So do you want to talk about that a little bit? I love this question. Yes, because you know what, it, the stuff you see on Instagram, you know, you see, you go to my Instagram, you see the nice cars, you see the watches, you see all the cool stuff, but you don't see from 14 to 24, the 10 years of me sitting at my desk, working and working and trying to figure out businesses and running to the post office to ship out products, the sweating, you know, the just the crazy stuff, right? Like the behind the scenes, you don't see that. And I think entrepreneurship is the loneliest career path you can ever choose, right? You're starting something from scratch that you only yourself believe in, and you have to kind of just figure it out. So for me, it took ten, literally almost eight years of different businesses from party promoting to selling, I was selling uh, mystery boxes online to, you know, I sold fake watches at one point. So just like doing a bunch of different things. And I kind of over time honed my skill of selling, which no matter what you're doing in life, whether you're a doctor, you're a lawyer, like everything you're doing is, is sales technically. Right. So I just, you know, I just kind of figured it out and, and I, I just met the right people at the right time. And it kind of just, it's like snowball effect. But I think that the key is you just can't, you can't give up and you just got to keep, you got to keep going and you only get what you ask for. So you got to just be vocal and you get what you want. And with the reality show, it was like, I'd been auditioning in COVID. I think I auditioned for like five or six different shows and none of them stuck. And finally, when I was about to give up, I ended up getting a DM saying, Hey, we got this new show called FY Island, like come do it. So, but the only, the other thing about that is the only reason I got it was because I've been active on social. I've been posting pictures of myself. I've been in the gym working out, like trying to perfect myself. So just you just got to keep doing things, I guess. 
No, I love that. I love how you say like, you don't get what you ask. You won't get what you don't ask for, which is so true. Like a closed mouth doesn't get fed. And you also, I love how you were saying you were putting in the work, you were posting on Instagram, you were going into the gym, you were doing all of those things. So you were really setting yourself up for that. Yes. Even though you've heard like all the no's before. And when you were auditioning, were those for reality shows or were those for acting? Like what type of auditioning were you doing? Yeah, great question. So it, most of them were for reality shows. Um, you know, I did a bunch. Of, I was like taping myself doing yoga, you know, like just a bunch of funny videos. I've been posting on TikTok for a while. So I'd submit a lot of those videos. Um, but what, what the thing that people don't know about me is I actually was an actor before. So I did Victorious. I did some things for BuzzFeed. But it's, again, eight years of going to auditions in person and trying to figure out acting didn't really lead to anything big. I think the biggest thing I did was Victorious, but it was a small, like a very small role. Mm -hmm. um, but it shows you, like, if you just go out and you audition and you promote yourself, like, you, you can get onto an HBO show. It's just, uh, it's just, it's your effort. That's all it is. Exactly. It's your effort. And I also like what you're saying about it's all about sales. Like, even if you are a doctor or a lawyer or X, Y, and Z, you're still selling yourself as the expert in the space or you're selling yourself as the person that they want to trust with this. So it's the same thing. You are selling yourself as the person or the persona that was right for this particular project. So you said that you got a DM, which I think is kind of everyone in our, yeah. in our world like ultimate goal just to be like, hey, I'm on YouTube, I'm on Instagram, and you get this DM from this executive or casting and they're like, we want you. So um, after you got the DM, what was that casting process like? Yeah, great question. <laughs> very long, very strenuous. So a whole lot of Zoom calls kind of like this, just kind of chatting with different people. You know, you got to be in your living room yelling like a crazy person, being wild. Um, you know, I would drink a lot of like bang energies to get like hyped up for the, <laughs> the interviews and stuff. So it's just like it's you and your in your apartment you know it's you in your apartment being in your zone and and just like being yourself and it, yeah for the audition process it was like i think eight to ten rounds of talking to producers to the network to casting directors like very long and strenuous and there's that big unknown of you don't even know if you're actually gonna get on the show right but i think that uncertainty like in anything you do it's gonna be there so you just gotta kind of fight through it absolutely and so for the show, it's called F Boy, which I think we all kind F -boy. of it's F Boy Island, yeah. F Boy Island, yes. I'm sorry, F Boy <laughs> Island. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about the show, and do you fall under which category? Are you more of an F Boy or are you more of a nice guy? <laughs> and I'll let you answer that, but then my actual question is: Is there really a difference? Because I don't. <laughs> think a lot of nice boys are just F boys in sheep's clothing. So mm. I don't know what do you think about that? That's a great, you're asking some bomb questions. Um, <laughs> you know, I went on to the show, look, I'm 24, right? Like I'm very selfish. I'm a Leo. I got a big ass lion's head out of my arm. Like Ooh. I'm very, <laughs> I'm very in my zone. And I'd say I've been an F boy. Like I date around, like I'll be talking to multiple women at the same time. But what people don't know is before the show, I was actually in a six year relationship. So I know how to commit. I know how to be in a committed relationship and, and do that whole thing. Uh, unfortunately, you know, she wasn't the one for me. So I had to get out of it. And then F Island came kind of like the perfect time. But in my elimination, I say, um, you know, I came here as an F boy, but the network doesn't show the second part of my sentence, which is, but I'm leaving as a nice guy. And the reason I said that was because, you know, when you're on an island by yourself, no phone, no nothing. You learn a lot about yourself, right? So I learned that I do love women. I do respect women. And I don't want to be that guy that is like, you know, part of my friends, but I don't want to fuck girls over. Like, I, I just don't, you know? So I think uh, <laughs> what's funny is I think I'm going to find love on reality TV. And I, I hope to be the first Indian bachelor at some point. I think that'll come true. <laughs> uh, so, you know, I, I think I'm a nice guy. And I do think there are nice guys, but everyone's got their F boy or F girl percentage in them, you know? So mm -hmm. yeah, that's my thoughts on that. Well, I love that. Well, I'm a big believer in speaking things into existence. So we're speaking it now. Inclusive. <laughs> Davij will be the first Indian bachelor. I'm so excited for you. We're it's so happening. I promise you it's happening. <laughs> it's happening. Yes. Um, but with that, um, 
So for being an F boy, like to me, the way I define an F boy isn't so much someone who wants to date around or not commit or wants to sleep with multiple people. It's more of the um, facade that there's more to it than just being friends with benefits. Like to me, an F boy is the guy that's like, oh, like, I like you so much. And like, I would like, I would beat you, but like, I got this, this and this, but like, you're the one and da, 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 da. Like they kind of like, <laughs> You know what I mean? It's like they put this front on that the booty call is more meaningful than just yeah. the booty call. And that to me is what makes an F boy an F boy. And then the nice guys are the ones who kind of mold and pretend to like love your poetry or they want to walk your dog or they want to hear you talk about your friend's drama all day long when in reality they don't really care they just want to get in the sheets so that's why I was kind of saying like f boys and nice boys are just like two sides of the same coin now did you find yeah. at all did you kind of find some of the nice guys were kind of really f boys in sheep's clothing I, you, I think the way you just said it is so, is so accurate. Like I've been in kind of both positions. The first is like, you know, you just, you want to have sex with someone and you're just going to say all these things to kind of reel them in or, and I think the problem with that is you're setting these crazy expectations. And then obviously that leads to heartbreak. Right. So I think the F boys are the, exactly what you said. It's the people who they're just doing too much. Like you're saying these things to make them believe something, but really it's not true. Right. So you're a liar basically. And then on the other side of the coin, the nice guys, kind of have the same intention it's like I still want to have sex with this person or I want to do this or this but they're approaching it in a different way which is they're pretending to care right so I think you're 100% spot on I think yeah. <laughs> I, maybe all guys are f boys. I don't know no no it's not it's like you want the genuine guy you want a guy who's genuine with you like if you just want this to be a hookup friends with benefits hit it and quit it say right. that so yeah. that I know what the expectations are or if you don't like all of these things and you're just pretending to like them to get in my in the sheets, like just be your authentic self and let's see if we're compatible. Like we don't have to like the same things to be compatible in a couple. But if you're lying about who you are, that's where the problem is. Right. So we want like a genuine men. And on the same token, like. Some girls are savages. Like Rihanna's let us know, like I'm a savage. Like F your white horse in a carriage. Like yeah. that's her <laughs> So there's F boys and there's savage girls. Were any of the girls low-key savages where they kind of came on the show, wanted to pretend to be this like, I'm a princess looking for my prince charming, blah, 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 blah. Um, but Loki maybe had some savage girl tendencies. I'll be honest. I think Nakia, Sarah, and CJ are all savages in kind of their own way. But CJ, it was the opposite. She was a high key savage. So she came in hot. Like she came in like, don't fuck with me. If you fuck with me, you're out, you know? <laughs> so uh, yeah, definitely some F girls on the show. And I, the women had all the power here in this. It, and not just women always have power, but in this situation, you know, they could do with us whatever they wanted. And unfortunately I got cut because uh, I said some things about CJ, so I learned <laughs> I learned it the hard way. But yeah. Uh, yeah, don't don't talk shit on don't talk shit on a woman, especially to your friends or anybody Ooh. for that matter. Was it to other guys or to other girls? Because both is wrong. One is more wrong. <laughs> I I talked shit about CJ to one of the guys on the show, and he ended up telling her because he's a snake. <laughs> In that situation. 100% he's this snake because if you said it to a girl I would understand it because it's almost like girl code it's just like it's really weird for a guy to talk shit to a girl about another girl to me that's yeah. psychological warfare where it's like you're the one I actually like so let's talk crap about this girl but if you're doing right. it to a guy that's just sort of like me venting about how I feel yeah it's right. like venting and you're talking and then for him to sort of betray you because I do think there should be a bro code too not in a like a misogynistic way but just in like a hey dude I'm talking to you about something you don't turn around and go tell her and honestly if I were CJ it would make me feel a type of way about that guy more so than you because yeah. I was like well you're proving you're not trustworthy and you're proving you will stab someone in the back to get what you want so if you treat him that way it's a matter of time before you treat me that way because you, exactly. are, you are who you are 
So I would actually, if I were CJ, I would have been like, he needs to go because loyalty means something. You know what I mean? Yes. Loyalty. And you know what? She, she kept, she kept Chris to the, basically to the end. And she didn't even confront me about, about what I said, you know, like there was no conversation with her about it. She just, just let me go. So it is what it is. You know, it wasn't meant to be. <laughs> she had no conversation with you about it. She just took this person's word as Bible. Didn't even approach me. Okay. Miss CJ. I'm talking to you <laughs> heart. We have to learn healthy communication skills. Yes. So when you hear something third hand, second hand, before you internalize it and say that is what the truth of this situation is, you want you want to have direct communication with the source. So you should like, oh, Devish, I'm rooting for you because I it's like that. I feel like you got screwed over because. She should have went to you and talked to you about it because who knows how he went and spun it? Who knows like what tone and twist he put on it and what, and obviously like, yes, you want to go there for love, but it is a competition. It is a show. There is strategy. You want to win as well. Like that's just a part of it. Yeah. Um, so to me, I feel like she got played, but she kind of played herself and on the same token, like, I know you do want to find love on reality TV. It's a good lesson for maybe she's not the type of person for you. Like maybe yeah, she, someone who is more mature and is more um, healthy communication and kind of gives you the benefit of the doubt, at least the chance to like defend yourself. Yeah, for sure. And in this situation, particularly, she obviously didn't owe me anything because she didn't know who I was. Right. So I don't I don't blame her for it. But you're hundred percent right. Like in any healthy relationship, you know, if I'm dating you and my friend comes up to you and say, Hey, Davidge said this, and you just dump me. It doesn't make sense. You're probably going to be like Davidge. Like, what did you say this? You know? So it is what it is. But I, I think uh, this whole FY Island experience was almost like training wheels for, for what's to come, you know? Cause I, I do think I'm going to be doing more TV, frankly. And I hope it's, again, I hope it's the bachelor. <laughs> <laughs> It will be The Bachelor. It will be. Um, and speaking of that, what did you learn about yourself while shooting F Boy Island? Like, was there something about you that you didn't realize that you either needed to learn about yourself or an old wound that you needed to heal when it came to finding love? Or, you know, were you stronger than you thought you were? Like, what, what, what were some things that you discovered about yourself during this journey? Yeah, you know what? Uh, I could go on and on. Like there's a whole list of, of things that I learned. I think the biggest thing, you know, <laughs> when you're on an island by yourself for two months and you're by yourself in the sense that, you know, if you're not filming, you're kind of just in your room. You don't have the opportunity to go outside or like do anything. So you're in your head, you're in your head a lot. You're doing things like yoga, meditation, journaling, you know, writing down thoughts. And I think I learned that, you know, I, I found success at a pretty young age, kind of financially with business. And I realized that I was leaning very heavily on that uh, in terms of showing people who I was. So, you know, I was showing off the cars, the watches, all the fancy stuff, but I wasn't, I wasn't displaying me, David, you know? So I learned that I need to really look more inward and stop caring about what other people's thoughts are about me or what I have, you know? So I think I'm at a place now where I've, I've humbled down, you know, I was, I was kind of a douche before, <laughs> um, but I, I'm keeping it chill and I, you know, I, I think the things that are important to me are family, friends, you know, obviously finances, financials are important, but it's not the end all be all. There's no difference between making a million bucks and three million bucks if you're unhappy, you know? So uh, I think that's what I learned. And in terms of love life and dating, I think, I think I need somebody who's going to emotionally and intellectually stimulate me even more so than the physical. Um, and again, maybe I'll find that on The Bachelor one day. I don't know, but I haven't found it yet. <laughs> Well, you might, you might. Did you learn anything about what you don't want in a partner versus what you do want in a partner? Because a part of the journey is yes, learning about yourself, but the other, but on the other hand, the part of the journey is learning about what you want in a partner as well. Like that's something I had to learn when it came to dating, like was, is this the person that I want to be with more so than coming? I think particularly as women, we come from the place of, um, I want to be good enough for him. I want to be chosen by him. I want him to pick me. Um, but then I had to realize, no, it's, is this a person that I want to choose? So did you learn anything around that about the type of person that you uh, ultimately want to choose for yourself? 
Yeah, for sure. You know, I, I think uh, I've kind of figured out what the values are that I think are important to me that the other person would have. Um, you know, things like as simple as like not being rude or like, you know, again, the CJ, the CJ situation, like communication, like those things I think are very important. Loyalty is huge. Um, I've been disloyal in past relationships and I've started to realize and kind of put myself in the other person's shoes and it sucks, you know, it's, it's painful and I don't ever want to have to go through being cheated on or even be like cheat on anybody ever again. So I think just loyalty, honesty, and communication are probably what I'm, I'm looking for. And obviously nice ass and all that stuff is cool, but it's, it's not as important, it's not as important to me at this point. <laughs> Yeah, we can always get personal trainers and things like that. We're fine. <laughs> but exactly. you can soul and personality and, and mindset and mental capacity. <laughs> exactly. It, like someone that you don't want to wake up and, you know, hit them with a frying pan. I think you're in a good place. <laughs> <laughs> Not a frying pan. <laughs> You'd be surprised. I've dated women where I'm like, I'll wake up and I'm like, if I had a frying pan, I'd, I'd smack, you know. <laughs> I'm kidding. I would never, I would never actually. Do that. I know, I know, I, I know, you're, I know you're kidding. Um, but along those lines, was there anything that you did on F Boy Island for HBO Max, which is such an awesome <laughs> thing? Um, yeah. Anything looking back on it that not necessarily regret, but either learned from or would have done differently if you could go back and do it again? Yeah, I would have. I would have beelined straight, straight to CJ and try to have built a relationship with her. I went for Sarah when I was on the show mm -hmm. um, and Sarah just not, we're not compatible. And I, I think if I had gone for CJ, like if you look historically at the girls that I've dated, they kind of all look like CJ, kind of have the same attitude. So I probably would have beelined for her. Um, uh, cool thing is she lives down the street so i can always just you know <laughs> oh so maybe it's f boy island part two <laughs> you never know and if there's an f girl island i better be i better be a contestant on there i'd love to do that <laughs> savage island i love it i love it um so for everyone out there who might be aspiring to be an entrepreneur, be a podcaster, YouTuber, work with some of the amazing people that you work with, act and do all of those great things. What advice would you give some people who might not feel confident enough to put themselves out there? Yeah, it's easy. You got to work on yourself first. I mean, take a break for a few months and just go on a retreat, you know, go do yoga in Wisconsin or like go for a hike in, I don't know, Maine, you know, like <laughs> do things that are outside of your comfort zone and you'll start to learn a lot about kind of who you are as a person and you got to solidify yourself internally before you can be external and like you know add value to society so you gotta you gotta get your mental straight so I, I would do, as simple as like a solid morning routine like yoga meditation like this morning when I woke up you know I hit the foam roll we did a little bit of theragun a little bit of yoga like these things are are important to do consistently and I'd say just yeah work on yourself and then you can start to you know execute and, and do things to actually achieve the goals that you have. I love it. And speaking of goals, do you have, we know that you're going to be the, the first, <laughs> we have that in yeah. the back. but um, in addition to that, what are some things that you're looking forward to? What are some of your new goals? Like, do you have anything coming up that we should be looking out for? Obviously yeah. we're all going to binge um, F, um, F Boy Island on HBO Max. Some new episodes are dropping tonight. So yeah. we'll be all watching that, but um, what, what does the future look like for you? I think, uh, a little bit of more reality TV is going to be in the future. I think um, selling my company is probably going to happen. Uh, my birthday's coming up next week, so I'm going to have a massive, massive party, which I'm stoked for. Order live uh, prices. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, honestly, twenty. It's, yeah, it's crazy, crazy. But um, what else? I mean, music. I'm dropping a music video next week. Um, music. But, wow. Yeah. Tell us about your music. <laughs> yeah, it's it's my first single called Rockstar uh kind of like hip-hop kind of vibes um so that's coming out next week podcast we're gonna have all the girls and all the cast on the, the podcast um so yeah just a lot of, a lot of fun things and you know just uh probably gonna buy a new car so excited for that too <laughs> i'll be watching on instagram i'll, I'll go yeah. follow yeah definitely and for everybody watching all of um 
DeVeejs, Instagrams and hashtags and handles and links will all be in the description box or the show notes, depending on if you're listening on the podcast or watching on YouTube. So if you want to connect with him, everything is linked below. I highly suggest that you do definitely some ab body motivation going on. So I've seen the photos. So yeah, as a follow, give him a shout out and send him some love. Yeah. So I, oh, I, um, one last question or so. Yeah. Did you find any friends on F boy Island? Like I know the premise is, you know, the girls they're on, they're on the Island. They want to separate the F boys from the nice guys and find yeah. love. <laughs> I always love sh- to me, the best part of reality shows, even if they're sort of these like love shows, is the bond and the friendship that happens between the women or between the men. So was there any guy that you gravitated towards and you guys kind of are still friends? Obviously not the CJ Snake guy, but someone else who, you know, you were able to find a friendship with. Because I think that's important too. I think having that support system and, and just having friends is also a part of the journey. Yeah, I think you, you you took it out of my mouth. Like Chris is complete trash. So definitely not Chris. Um, but you know what's crazy is I, before going into the show as an entrepreneur, like again, as I mentioned before, it's a very lonely journey. And I, I've had friends and I've, I've always had my like tight circles. But I think th- from this show, I've literally found my friends that I'm going to have for the rest of my life. So like Charlie, Peter, Israel, pretty much everybody else. Like I think we're going to have this, the bond, you know, <laughs> we went to, through this experience together that no one else can relate to obviously so there's we've built connections on such a deep level that um i'm very grateful for yeah so big shouts to uh, charlie for sure charlie's my guy he helped me get back in shape <laughs> yay i love it i love it sounds good well thank you so much Devij. this was awesome um i know that you said you didn't get chosen but still wishing you <laughs> And we're all going to watch and we are looking forward to seeing what you do next. So for everyone listening, that's right. Hit that subscription box, hit that show notes and give him a follow. Give him a shout out. Watch F-Boy Island on HBO Max. Four new episodes are dropping tonight. So catch up on what you've missed and then binge all the new episodes and we will be following you. Thank you so much, Devij. And, And if you guys like this fun interview, be sure to subscribe follow, comment below, hit your girl up at Candy Washington. And until next time, I love you and be well. Bye. Thank you, Candy. Appreciate it.